and welcome. Today I'm going to do a docutorial, which is kind of a documentary and a tutorial demo of the products of a makeup company. And today I've decided to do a special on Merle Norman Cosmetics. Now some of you may remember Merle Norman, especially from the 1970s. I know I got my disco makeup there and I was one big shiny glitter ball from stem to stern. <laughs> Back in the 1980s, I stopped using Merle Norman because I thought it was just for old ladies. Now they have quality products, really good formulas, and they are ahead of their time in many ways. I think they've been a little intimidating because of the shop that you have to walk into, and I think we uh, um, kind of compare that to walking into a Nordstrom's or a Macy's and going to the Estee Lauder counter or something and being snubbed or being judged or feeling very uncomfortable like I didn't belong there. So Merle Norman, even though it looks quite foreboding in the mall or in the shopping center that you see it in, it's actually worth going in because they're all independently owned and the people who run these places are makeup lovers and you don't have to buy anything, there's no minimum, they don't do just half your face and if you want the other half done you have to buy the lipstick, it's nothing like that. They'll decide the best colors for you and they'll show you how to do your brows or how to do false eyelashes or how to do lip lining and for those of you who haven't done makeup in a while it's a wonderful experience now me miss know-it-all went in there thinking since i know everything about makeup what could this woman possibly show me <laughs> and she managed to teach me a lot i had a wonderful time and i totally recommend any of you try this out because it's a lot of fun and you learn a lot and you can find some new colors that maybe were outside your comfort zone at one point. So before I do the demo to show you how I did this face for my plain face, um, let's do a little bit of a history of Merle Norman Cosmetics. Merle Norman was born Merle Nethercutt back in 1887. She married in the early 1920s and with her husband moved to California where she began a creative project of making skin care and foundation and blush in her kitchen. She actually tried all of these things out on her friends and family and as a flapper makeup was coming into vogue and she wanted to create some new colors and styles now the couple was childless, but her brother, who was a widower already, passed away and his two sons came to live with her and her husband. She had the oldest boy, Jack, known as JB, go door to door selling her face creams. Meryl herself went off to the beach and gave samples out to the ladies who were there. She also did little mini makeovers on women, which were very, very attractive at that time. It hadn't been done before. Her try before you buy method was very popular with the California gals. She also did home visits in which she would do makeovers on older people, and word got around soon that this makeup person was really good. Women of fashion and style in the 1930s looked her up because Hollywood had beautiful actresses who were wearing makeup and women wanted to emulate them. Merle Norman Cosmetic Company was born. She opened a small factory in California. The makeover that was totally free was what she hoped would sell the cosmetics. She was a very ambitious and successful woman and the company soon thrived. They opened in 1936 this giant factory. It was the depression and many many families were out of work and very poor but for some reason her business thrived. Women were looking for ways to feel better about themselves and this was the glamorous lifestyle. Her nephew who was actually the son she was raising, uh, JB, he decided to quit college and help her at the factory. He created machinery like this one, which actually packs the powder into boxes so they could do more mass-marketed products and sell worldwide. He also invented the blush, which later became several other types of blush and contour and liquid blush. 
along with her skin care and other items, the company became more and more successful to the point where they decided to expand. She actually trained some of her salespeople to have their own stores and the franchise was born. She trained mostly women to open their own stores and do makeovers on other women. So across the country, Merle Norman franchise stores grew. All of the cosmetics came from the Merle Norman factory. In the meantime, her nephew, whom she was raising, JB, married his high school sweetheart, Dorothy, and they had a love of old cars like Packard's. And they started to buy them and rebuild them to the point where over the years they had such a collection of rare and exotic Packards. They opened a free museum which never charges admission and is one of the best collections of Packards in the world. The Merle Norman factory was producing millions of items and they were sent all around the United States as women far and wide opened up their own franchise and did free makeovers on common women. Merle herself started to become a celebrity. This is her with Babe Ruth. Ads started to appear in magazines and the image of the successful and classy and upper class lady, unusual and exotic packaging, and ad campaigns that made you look and feel a little better than the common person were what made Merle Norman Cosmetics stand apart from the others. It seemed to attract an older crowd and it was frustrating for Merle Norman because they wanted to attract young people to the cosmetics. It seemed to be the cosmetic company of old ladies. So they started to do specials and they started to sort of get hip with the advertising, creating more products, futuristic pioneering formulations and they tried to shed that just for old ladies image. Her skin care process was legendary and she had many wonderful products that people could count on. There were Merle Norman stores tried to cash in on different types of giftware and different types of people by adding gifts and special deluxe boxes for Christmas shopping so that you could make it a one-stop shop for your lady friend and not just buy makeup and skin care. There were very unique designs and patterns to many of the cosmetic products and skin care was ahead of its time with moisturizers, cleansers, scrubs, and masks. Merle Norman also had kits of various types of makeup all put together in one go and she had lunch boxes and specialty items that no other cosmetic company had at the time. This was an inspiration for companies like Avon and Mary Kay, who soon followed in her footsteps. Merle Norman is a place of before and after, and that was her trademark. You could go in and not spend a dime and go out looking like completely transformed. Merle Norman cosmetics were infamous especially for the before and after makeovers, and women flocked to the stores. Meryl's own home sold recently in Santa Monica, and it showed her impeccable taste and artistic ability for decoration. But this wasn't her favorite place to live. She was actually in love with Tucson, Arizona, and Meryl often went to one particular place. Her nephew had built her the El Rancho Merlita, which is a beautiful house and estate and rooms located in Tucson. It's now a bed and breakfast, but she used to fly out all of her franchisees for free vacations during the year as a special gift for selling her products. We lost Merle Norman in 1972, a grand lady lost forever. There was a commemorative plate created in her honor, and her son took over the business. JB ran the company until 2004 when he himself passed away. His son, Jack, 
is now the new CEO of the company and he does the training for new franchises and encourages people to open their own studios. He and his wife Helen oversee the factory and also the car museum. Large companies have their share of time in court. Helen had given what she thought was motherly advice to one of the marketing directors and the marketing director didn't appreciate being told that the type of underwear she was wearing was incorrect. And she took them to court and she did win. Also, there were rumors that some of the skincare items that they had contained products that were not approved by the FDA, possibly even dangerous. This, of course, has been corrected over the years and with FDA regulations. And then they had to take a franchisee to court because they were selling a competitor's makeup alongside of theirs and they hadn't paid their bills for a while. But the most scandalous thing that happened was a recent book called High Styles, which was written by a hairstylist to the celebrities, who mentioned in passing that Merle Norman's husband had a nice young mistress that he supported. And when he died, she had visited him in the hospital so often with the chauffeur he provided, she fell in love with the chauffeur and married him. In 2011, Merle Norman celebrated 80 years of cosmetic greatness and hired a famous French uh, designer to redo their packaging, gave them a whole new makeover themselves. They still remain cruelty free and most of their products are vegan as well. One of the more unusual releases with that particular year was the Huzzy collection and this was based on the car, one of the famed Packards that JB had had. Nail polishes and lipsticks and even a perfume were created after the car. This is definitely not makeup for stuffy old ladies. This is a broad range of makeup that is pioneering in its formulation. Beautiful blushes, liquid and powder, gorgeous eyeliners, and those pearls that are so famous. The products are modern and new and they reach a broad range of skin tones and types. This is definitely not your mother's Merle Norman, definitely. <laughs> With a plethora of products that they have, they have many award-winning products that have been over and over again award-winning and are featured often in very current, very popular fashion and beauty magazines. see a wide range of products here. There is no shortage of assortment and selection. And the pink dots next to them are awards they've won. And there's even fragrance and wigs. The Merle Norman website is a wonderful place to visit. You can learn step-by-step -step instructions with exact products and placement. You can watch all kinds of videos and this is where I learned how to put false lashes on. You can get tips and tricks. You can have the foundation finder help you select and I had a blast with this eyeshadow wizard who showed you how to use a color in different ways. You can only purchase Merle Norman cosmetics by going to the store. Although they will mail them to you, you have to order them through a particular store. And there's nothing like going to the store. I went to the Lemonster Mass store, and it's located in a little outdoor shopping center. And it was chock full of goodies, from wigs to brushes to nail polishes, and all of the inventory of Merle Norman. Now Morena was the store owner and she did a makeover on me. She's a wonderful lady, very, very patient, and she was just so good and so uh, such a good sport because I told her I was a YouTuber and uh, she, uh, she just did a makeover on me and I just let her have at it. No matter how much you know about makeup, you can always learn something at Merle Norman. Now she was a wonderful lady and she had an amazing career, an amazing cosmetic company that still thrives today. But she was a philanthropist and she also donated heavily to a lot of charities and institutions 
They recently dedicated a ward of the Santa Monica Hospital of UCLA to her. Merle Norman may no longer be with us, but her legacy lives on. And it's amazing company. I totally recommend Merle Norman Cosmetics. I really like that lady. I, I just, oh man, I like this company. Can you tell? <laughs> um, so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from beginning to end, complete Oh, face makeover myself using all Merle Norman cosmetics. I think the contour is the only thing I didn't use from there and I don't know why I forgot to get the contour but um, I also used the contour in my eyes in the crease so I didn't get the crease color either. <laughs> my bad. Anyway, to the magic of video, let's go back in time and let's start at the beginning and let's see a makeover. Be back with you soon. Here we go. We're going to start off with a moisturizer. This is the Brilliant C Moisturizer. And this came in a little promo kit with different other um, face items. I'm just putting it on the areas that need a little extra hydration. Moving on. This is the Perfecting Makeup in Ivory. I always shake any bottle or tube. And I'm putting this on with the same kind of brush that she used when she put it on me on one side of my face and I'll use my fingers on the other side of my face. It's a really, really nice foundation. It gives you a very natural finish. It does not sink into the lines. It's got some really good coverage. I would say it's about a medium coverage foundation. I'm going on this side with my hands and I think there's much more control with your fingers and the heat of your hand can really um, help meld it into your skin easier I believe. Um, my preferred use is this one or the sponge, Beauty Blender sponge. Going on to the concealer and this is the Duo Action Concealer Corrector in the color light. Just doing all the center area of my face to keep the light to the center. And I'm using my ring finger to sort of uh, punch that in a little bit, just blending it lightly, not using too much pressure. We don't want any more uh, pressure in the under eye area than we have to have. This is a liquid shimmer and the color is called Anything Glows. This has numerous uses. I'm using it as a upper cheek highlighter and I'm using just over the cupid's bow, center of the face, under the brows, and uh, I think it's a, a really nice multi-purpose product. This is a liquid blush. I believe this is new this year and it's called Captivating. Just putting a few dots on and blending it with my fingers gives an airbrush look. It's a beautiful color. It looks like it would work with most skin types. On the other side I'm going to use a powder cheek color in Bare Mauve. It's the lasting cheek color and I used the brush that came in the package which is a mistake because you really need a little more control with the brush. Looks like somebody slapped me upside the head using some down the decollete area. It's actually a very nice blush. More on the blue tone side, cool tone. This is the Flawless Effect Loose Powder in Barely There. This is a really good one if you have very dry skin because it does not sink into the wrinkles. And I think using a light powder brush is a better way to use this. I am pressing it in with a powder puff which I think gives you a little bit more product on the face and it would be better suited for summertime when you are um, got a, a moister face. Using my own contour here because I forgot to purchase contour from um, Merle Norman. And I'm just going around the edge of the face to give a little bit of uh, contour. This is the first of the eyeshadows and this is called Chamois. It is a matte color and I'm going to use it all over the lid using the little sponge applicator that came with it. 
wish I'd paid more attention to the brushes she used when she did my makeover. It's a nice coverage on that. They're very silky. The next color is a lid and shimmer color and it's called Rosewater. And I believe she used it um, on my lid and up a little bit um, into the crease, but that was not my preferred method. This is a darker shade. It's kind of a nice uh, neutral grayish brown and it's called Storm. And I'm using it in the outer corner and moving it towards the outside of the crease. I'll be bringing this back a little bit later after I add lashes. These shadows blend really nicely. Now I'm using my contour again with my own brush just to put um, a little bit of texture in my eyelids. This is the Soft Touch Eye Pencil in Hazy. This is an award-winning eye pencil. This particular color is very pretty. It's kind of a grayish color. I'm just going in the um, outer half on the lower lid using the smudging end. I'm just kind of smudging out what I just drew on. And I'm using it as an outer corner color as well. I probably could have used a little more blending though. Now this is a brow sealer, it's called. I had tried several of the pencils and I found that they are on the dark side, especially if you're a pale blonde or a light blonde. The taupe pencils tended to be like almost like a brown. And uh, this color is great. This is a, it's just called taupe. And it's a, it's a mascara that coats all the white and gray hairs in your brows. I prefer to use a pencil first and then do that. This is the Wicked Lash Mascara, another award-winning product, and this gives you big old honking lashes. I always curl my lashes first, and you're going to see it's a nice big brush. It's a usual typical kind of brush. It's not one of those big rubbery things. And I'm doing the first coat rather thickly and quickly. Of course, this video is speeded up two times, but doing this in the shop, Marina said, get that clump out. <laughs> she gave me one of those um, brow combs to uh, and lash combs to get the clumpy mascara out, but I kind of like the clumps actually. She didn't know that. There are some things they let you do by yourself and some things they help you with and Mascara is one of those things they prefer you do yourself, I think, because you know where your eyeball is. Very, very nice mascara. Wicked Lash Mascara. Now this is the lips, and this is a really cool product. It is on one end a lip liner, and on the other end a lipstick. It is so convenient, and you actually could use both ends as a lip color. I flipped it over and this is Carnation Pink is the color. It's slightly lighter than the color she put on me, which I thought was a little dark, but it actually looked pretty good. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep going and I'm going to put some false lashes on. Oh no, wait a minute, I'm going to use some other lip colors. This is the next lip color and it's called Spring Rose. It's a very, very pretty color. another one. This is a liquid lip color and it's called Happily Ever and this is a very neutral shade. This will look good on pretty much everyone. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's slightly more neutral than the other one. The other one is a little bit on the warm side. And this third shade, it's like the three bears, this is the perfect one. This is called Social Light. Or Social Light, if you say it fast. I just think this is a gorgeous color. I 
had several other samples. I was going to swatch them, and then I thought, you know, I'm going to stop. I'll swatch them in another haul. Now I'm moving the mirror up because I'm going to do some false lashes, and this is the Merle Norman method. I actually learned this from watching a Merle Norman video several months ago, and I did put this in my How to Put on False Lashes video. You're actually putting the lash glue right on the edge of your lashes on your actual lid, and then just pressing the lashes against them. They are on almost instantly. The heat of the skin on your lid just makes that glue set really fast. And again, you're just putting that little stripe of lash glue right on your lid. And you're putting that lash right on there and pressing it in, making sure the ends are down. And voila, that's done. It's the quickest you will ever do false lashes. Now I'm adding a little bit more of the Storm eyeshadow, and we're done. So there you have it. This is the Merle Norman base, and I am so pleased with this. And another really good tip that Marina gave to me was she said, after you've done your eyes, if it seems like you need a little bit more blush, just add it at the end. And that way you won't overdo it in the beginning. And you can add just enough to look airbrushed when you leave the salon. I absolutely really enjoyed my makeover. And I think that it's nice to let yourself just have the makeover, let them decide the colors, let them do the techniques you will learn something. I mean, I wasn't so full of myself that I didn't listen to her. And I wouldn't have chosen some of these colors. I wouldn't have um, probably done one of the techniques she did on my eyes, but I really loved seeing a second opinion. And I think it's a really worthwhile venture to go out to your nearest Merle Norman and have a makeover as well. I hope you've enjoyed today's special on Merle Norman Cosmetics. It's an amazing company. They're cruelty free. Um, it's very, very empowering to women. And they have a very interesting history as well. I love the products that I've tried. I think there were very few in here that I wasn't totally pleased with. And I certainly will be buying some of these things again and experimenting with some of the other colors, especially the lip products. I think that they were just outstanding. So thank you again, Marina, for. Uh, the wonderful makeover and for being such a good sport when I went into your shop in Lemonster, Mass. And um, to all of you, thank you for watching this far and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.